interesting episode of Achievers Masterclass. It is a platform where we lecture our students on how to become successful in their driving theory exams here in Italy. Thank you very much for joining us and I'd like to you know, thank our distinguished subscribers all over the world for their support so far in making sure that what we do is going well. I want to thank you and I want to welcome you once again to this interesting episode of Achievers Masterclass. I also want to implore you to please share this video to your social media community so that everyone that is interested or have a need for what we are going to learn today will have access to it so that um, they can do well and they get past their driving theory exams. All right, that is if you've not done so already. But if you have not um, done so already, please go ahead, do that, share. If you are not a subscriber and you are joining us for the first time, I want to use this opportunity to welcome you. Thank you for joining. And I'd like you to consider subscribing to this channel so that you can be getting um, access to our videos, our live videos like this, or our subsequent videos that we do, you know, trying to teach people or trying to explain some of the driving, you know, signals that are out there all right so as we dive in please um, i'd like to invite my my students to join us in today's lecture all right, thank you tina for coming Don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section in case you have any questions as we you know go ahead in our lecture if you have any questions don't forget to share with us put them in the comment section and i'll give you the answer you so desire okay thank you so much as we await our our students all over the world Please ignore my glasses. I don't know this. The weather is not really favorable to me, so I have been asked to, you know, make use of glasses whenever I'm under open light. All right. So please ignore them. They are not for fashion. Yeah. Thank you, Kikitoria, for coming. Thanks for the thumbs up. Done. Please share this video. Nick, is that a Mrs. Mary? Yes, please. <laughs> Afternoon, you're welcome. How was your week? Ah, uh, 
my God, Gracie, how fast. Okay. Um, let's wait again. Let's wait for one of our students that's about to join. Okay. Good afternoon, madam. You are welcome. Yeah, how is the family? Okay. I beg you, I want to beg for something. Okay. Next time you tell me the time of the evening. Okay, okay. Okay, okay there's no problem. You are welcome. I understand. Um, all right, quickly, let's go to what we have for today. Where was the last... Um, where did we stop in our last lecture? Please ignore the glasses I'll be using it because um, the sun is too much on my eyes. Two two one or two two two. Can we get to two two one? Did we get to two two one? This is um okay, that's where we stopped. Yes. Let me um, look for it for this book. Okay, Mrs. Mary, where, which page are you on in what you are studying so far? Is it page 145? Please, no, mine was 110. Okay, 110. We were talking about Adrian and Adrian. Yeah, 110. Okay, because the book, the book I have here is quite different from 145. The book I have here is quite different from because there are several books. But nevertheless, 
This one car is similar to the one you have. This one I have right now is similar to the one you have. It's very similar to the one you have. Okay. So um, let's continue. Okay, please. Let's continue from where we start, which is um, um, page 216 in our old book and then page 146 here. Okay, it's like we'll finish this page 216. Okay, now let's continue. Okay. Characteristic e uso deli luci. Okay, we have also finished it. But let me run through it so that we will we'll know what um, we are into. Characteristic e deli luci. Uh, Characteristics of the luci, yes. All the characteristics of the lights that we have in our vehicle. Number one, luci the position. Luci the position, both the, the one in front, the one at the back, and the one by the side. Sono bianche anteriormente e rose dietro. E servono a segnalare sia la presenza che ingombro del veicolo. Visto anteriormente, posteriormente, laterale. Now, um, you see this light that they call Luci di Posizione. It helps you to indicate or to tell you where the vehicle is. Or to tell you that, there's, that, there's a pre that the presence of a vehicle is on the road. Most especially when it is parked. If a vehicle is parked, the Luci di Posizione is put on to indicate that there is a vehicle on that road. You understand? Yeah, so that is what Luci di Posizione is for. Devono essere sempre accese quando le norme richiedono l'uso delle luci e vanno sempre integrate con i proiettori. Same thing like we explained in our lecture last week. It is always put on. When you put it on, it is when you have parked your vehicle and you want to leave your vehicle. Maybe because that place is dark somehow, you can leave it on. To indicate that yes, there is a and something is there's a vehicle parked on that road or in that park space. The next one is proiettori a luci anabaliante servono ad illuminare la strada davanti al veicolo fino a una certa distanza senza abbagliare. What they use this anabaliante light for, like I explained in our last lecture, is that they use it to see further, to see ahead of the road in front of you, to a you know to a notable distance, without having to you know disturb the oncoming vehicles or the driver of the oncoming vehicles that are coming on the other side of the road. You know that's why it's called anabaliante. It does not disturb. It does not disturb their eyes. Per care. Il loro fascio luminoso rivolto prevalentemente verso il basso. Why is it that it does not disturb? It does not disturb because the, the, the light, the way it is set in your vehicle, is as if it's set downward, like I explained in our last lecture. It's set it downward, it's not raised upwards. If it is when it is raised upward, that is when it will be disturbing other road users. But since it is set on the road, they bring it down, they, see, they bend it, in such a way that as you are driving, it can only illuminate the road for you, not the other vehicle that is coming because of how they put it, how they set it in the vehicle. That's why it is called an ambaliante. We talked about that in our last lecture. In our last lecture. Non copisce direttamente i conducenti dei veicoli incrocianti. It does not go direct to their eyes. It does not flash directly into the eyes of the driver that is coming on the opposite side. It is, it is bowed to the road, it is faced to the road, so that as people are driving, as you are driving, you are seeing the road ahead of you. It is not raised in such a way that it will be disturbing the oncoming driver on the other lane. You know? In Proiettori and Abaliante, asymmetrici, we talked about this thing, asymmetric, illuminano, illuminano, in maneria, Particulare immagine destro della carreggiata. I've told you the meaning of um, asymmetry. That means 
how the position is in the triangular position facing downward facing how the light is facing downward that is what they mean by asymmetric okay and it is just there to illuminate just the road not any other thing just the road for you that is driving so that you have a clear picture of the road you are driving on now continues per evitare che i proiettori annabaliati constituiscano pericolo per i veicoli incrocianti e il loro fascio luminoso è diretto verso il basso like I explained before la rata impostazione del orientamento di fare figura G look at this figura G you will see where the road 1, 2, 3 this button that you wrote 1, 2, 3 helps you to adjust the light in case the light is facing upward. I'm talking about this anabaliant. If it's facing upward and it's disturbing other road users, you can use the light to adjust it. You know, you can use the light, the, I mean that button there, not the light this time. You use the button there that they wrote 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Use it to adjust it, you know, so that it can come down. You know, according to how you want it, in such a way that it does not disturb any other road user. Okay, the rate of postation of the light of fire will perturb, reduce the visibility of the conductor to abalear the other utensils. If you raise this light up, you know, against how it is supposed to be done. Or against how it's supposed to be used, or against how it's supposed to be raised, at the end of the day, it will not help you that is driving, and it will be an issue to oncoming drivers that are coming on the other side. You understand? As long as it is raised a bit up, it will no longer serve the purpose for which it is it is set in your vehicle. The purpose is for you to clear, to show you the road that is ahead of you, most especially at night, to you know illuminate the road for you. But the situation whereby it is raised. It will, you will discover that it's no longer showing you the road, number one. And number two, it will be disturbing other road users, it will be disturbing their eyes because it has, it is now flashing directly to their eyes. You understand? It's now flashing directly to their eyes. People that suffer this thing most times are, you know, drivers that, um, that their, their vehicle, you know, their vehicle is low. For instance, people that are driving Jeep, you know, those people that are driving it, their vehicle is a bit high. Instead of them to, you know, reduce it or bring it down, they leave it like, they raise it up. So as they are driving towards any driver, it is affecting that driver's eyes. It is really affecting that driver's eyes. Seriously. I've, I, I usually pass through such issues during winter. As I'm trying to you know, during winter period now, you know, it takes, before you know, by 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock, everywhere has become dark. So everybody must use their... And a baliante. So, because their own is, the people that are driving on the, on the road, their own is raised up, which in the wrong way, which is very wrong. They use it to threaten people like myself, you know, because as they are flashing there, it is going straight into my eyes, going straight into my eyes, then disturbing my vision. You understand? Which is very wrong. It's supposed to be faced downward. If it is faced downward, it will not disturb any oncoming driver. That's what they're saying here. If you don't do it well, it will disturb other oncoming drivers and it will not even help you because you will not be able to see the road. You will not be able to see the road that it is supposed to show you. It will not be able to illuminate the road that is supposed to illuminate for you. You understand the point? So that is why it's good to you know regulate it, bring it down to the various minimum so that it can serve its purpose. Now, Tale regolazione avviene in genere per una variazione del carico di passeggeri e bagaglio sul veicolo che ne ha cambiato l'assetto. Okay. Ad esempio, abbassandone il retrotreno per lo schiacciamento delle sospensioni. Yeah. You see, the reason why this thing has to be put in check all the time is because sometimes you can repair your vehicle. You can reduce, you can change your suspension. That's what they call suspension. I changed mine recently. That's why I, I want to explain it to you so that you understand. Your suspension, there's, a, there's an instrument called suspension in your vehicle. It is, you know, connected to the tires, to your four tires. 
So as, as you are driving your vehicle, after a long while, it will, it will get old. So when it gets old, your, it will be, your vehicle will be malfunctioning. Under your vehicle will be malfunctioning. You understand? So it calls for change. So when you change it, mm -hmm. when you change it, because as it was before, as it is getting old, your, it, will, it, will, it will now reduce. It will no longer be as high as it was. It will now reduce. Thereby, you know, um, changing, changing how that light is working in your vehicle. It will affect the, 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 the position of the light because it has reduced. You understand? So when you now change it to a new one, your vehicle will now come up again because these ones are new one. When you change that suspension, they call it suspension. In Italian, Italians call it braccio suspension. When you change it in your vehicle, your vehicle will be a little bit raised. You understand? So when your vehicle is a little bit raised, you will discover that the lighting system is also raised. I don't know if it's clear. The lighting system, the headlamp of your vehicle is also raised. Why? Because your vehicle is a little bit raised. So as your vehicle is a little bit raised, it has also affected the, the, your, your lighting, your abaliant, your anabaliant light there. You will discover that as you are driving, it will be affecting other roads. So what you are supposed to do as at that point in time is to go back to this diagram G here and then regulate it very well by bringing it down. You understand? So that it can serve its purpose very well without having to become an issue to other road users or other drivers that are coming on the opposite direction. Do you understand? If it's not clear, I can re-explain. Anytime you change anything that has to do with your tire or your suspension, it affects the height of your vehicle. You understand? If you change it from an old one to a new one, the height of your vehicle will change. It will affect definitely, it must definitely affect the height of your vehicle. So what you are supposed to do as you change it is to also go back to this diagram G. Locate this button in diagram G in your vehicle and then adjust it very well so that it can come down the more. You understand? When you do it like that, you will discover that it will no longer be an issue. But if you leave it the way it is as a result of the race of your vehicle being raised, it will become issue or it will become an issue to other drivers that are coming on the other side. You understand? Most people don't understand this. Most people don't know this thing that I'm explaining to you, except if they understand this book or if maybe they've gone through this book. You understand? Myself, I know. So as soon as I changed the suspension, what I did was I located this button. This button is in every vehicle. I located it and I brought it down so that it will not be an issue to other road users at night. Do you understand it? So that's what this explanation is all about. In fact, Paul Vendacheso Leluce Anabalianti se corre e rischio di abaliare gli altri se i proiettori sono regolati troppo alti. Yes, se le lampade sono montate in maniera errata or se non sono di tipo omologato if you remember what we talked about last lecture we talked about omologato omologato means approved so some people when they want to buy this headlamp maybe the one they have in their vehicle has gone bad you know they want to purchase another one instead of them to purchase the omologato the one that is approved for that one they go and purchase whichever one or they want to purchase the one that is too bright at the end of the day it will disturb it will be disturbing other road users we explained we talked about all this in our last lecture now the next one is proletar aluche abaliat de profondita i call it or the profondita or you can call it adabaliat so anyway you see luce de profondita or luce abaliat they are talking about the same thing it's the same thing which is the one that disturbs the eyes hanno un fascio luminoso rivolto prevalentemente in profondità per illuminare la strada a grande distanza davanti al veicolo. You know, it has a kind of light, a kind of light that illuminates the road. Um, you know, illuminates the road to a very great deal. Illuminates the road to a very great deal in front of the vehicle, in front of the vehicle. Si possono anche utilizzare per segnalazione luminosa in sostituzione del clavson. You can also use it as a lampaggio light. You can use it as a lampaggio light, you know, to inform a driver that is in front of you of something. Maybe you want to overtake driver, you don't want to go. You can use the light to indicate, let the driver in front of you know that, look, 
you want to overtake him instead of using your klaxon. You know, klaxon is that horn, the pee horn. You know, they call it klaxon here. So instead of using your klaxon, you can use that one, you know, to inform people that, look, this is what you are about to do. You are about to, you know, um, you're about to overtake them. Okay, now, let's go to um, the second book so that I can make some explanations here. Luce abaliante, luce di posizione, I've told you what it is. Luce di posizione, rendono visibile il nostro veicolo. La lampada delle luce di posizione è bianca. These are just the two important information you need to know about this luxury position. The color is white, number one. Number two is to, for your, the presence of your vehicle to be noticed on the road. You know, the visibility of your vehicle. You understand? The other one is Proiettoria Anabaliante, like you explained before. Illuminando la strada e aprendo la stanza. Okay? Then, Pia Verde. In your vehicle, there's what they call Spia. I told you that before. Spia is your dashboard, all those lights that are on your dashboard. All those lights that are on your dashboard there, they call them spear. All right, all of them have meaning. In this abaliante that you have outside, if you switch it on, there's a light that is that comes on in your spear. And that light is green in color. You understand? So you must take note, as you know these things, you must take note of the kind of light that are associated with them in the spear. Okay? Luce di posizione. Is like two flashing lights, one flashing towards the right, one flashing towards the left, and their color in the spear is green. The same thing with Proiettori and Abaliante, the color in the spear is also green. Then uh, Proiettori and Abaliante, that is the one that is too powerful, the color is blue. Okay, so that is it. So, Spia via de per gli Abaliante, se le lampade. Degli anabalianti sono montate sbagliate, si possono abbagliare gli altri. Ok, like I explained, if it is wrongly fixed, it will definitely disturb other road users. Ok, now let's continue. Uso delle luci nei centri abitati durante la marcia del veicolo a motore now we want to talk about the places and how to use we have talked about the characters of these lights the characters of these lights or this lighting system in our vehicles this most important to us now i want to talk about the how they can be used okay it's called uso delle luci nei centri abitati durante la marcia marcia del veicolo a motore the Centri Habitat. What is Centri Habitat? Central City Center. That is what they call Centri Habitat. Da mezz'ora dopo il tramonto del sole a mezz'ora prima del suo sorgere, which means from then, from morning to night, from the rising of the sun, like I said last in our last lecture, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. All right, that is when you are supposed to use this light. In centri abitati. Okay. Now, e anche di giorno nelle gallerie ed in ogni altro caso di scarsa visibilità. When there is scarce visibility, scarce visibility, that is when you can use your light. When you're about to, even in the daytime, when you're about to enter what they call galleria, that galleria is tunnel. That's what they call tunnel in Italian. Galleria means tunnel in Italian. Okay. Now, Neve, pioggia, nebbia. These are the times you have to also use this light. During neve, neve is when it is snowing. During pioggia, when it is raining. And nebbia, when there is um, humidità or fog. Why? Because you know how it is now. When there is humidità, so you leave house in the morning. During that uh, winter period, as the winter is coming, you will be seeing that humidità. As if you will not everywhere it's just be cloudy. You will not be able to see far. You know, you will not be able to see further in your vehicle. You get so in such instances, these are the times you need to use your light. These are the times you need to use your light, and these lights are very, very important. These are the times you need to use them. 
Now, the second time, your in type of the second time you're supposed to use your lights is obligatory. Muso de la luce de position de predatoria na balanti de la luce de taka e se prescrito de la luce de ingombro. Now, these are the important lights that needs to be used. Your anabalianti must be used, luce de position must be used, and your luce de taga, most especially at night. Why? Because when you are driving at night, that luce de taga that is at the back of your vehicle helps to make the number of your vehicle visible. So that in case there's any issue, you know, that number of the vehicle can be easily identified. You understand? The number of such vehicles can be easily identified. Why? Because of the luce. Luce di Taga, that is positioned in that place. Okay. For the Chantry Habitat, now we've talked about the Chantry Habitat, the time that you're supposed to use your lights and the kind of lights you're supposed to use in your Chantry Habitat. Now we want to talk about for the Chantry Habitat. For the Chantry Habitat is normal for outside the city center. Okay. Nell'auto strada e strada estrubane. Durante la marcia dei veicoli a motore è obbligatorio sia di giorno che di notte l'uso delle luci di posizione dei proiettori a balianti delle luci della targa e se prescritte delle luci di ingombro. These are the times and the kind of lights are supposed to use from day to night, during the day and during the night. In foreign centri abitati, you must make sure that your lights are working. You must make sure that your lights are working. Most especially during the outside for the chantry habitat. You must make sure that your lights are working and they're in good condition. And the kind of lights that you must be using is neutral position the proletary and abalient. You see, since this one they've not been talking about this abalient because they know how dangerous it is, so they don't mention it. It's not to be used, whether for the habitat or even in Chantry habitat, you are not supposed to use it at all. You can only use it to signal the driver in front of you that you want to overtake. All right, so that is the issue. Now, the next one we're talking about here is for the Chantry habitat. Nelle autostrade e strade estrovane. Now, you know, there are four that for the Chantry habitat that is not autostrada. But there is another for the Chantry Habitat that is Autostrada because Autostrada is definitely for the Chantry Habitat. Autostrada is for the Chantry Habitat. Okay? And um, because Autostrada is also for the Chantry Habitat, even tangentially, or should we say extraurban, is under also Chantry Habitat. They are under also, sorry, they are under for the Chantry Habitat. Now, Durante la marcia dei veicoli a motore è obbligatorio sia di giorno che di notte l'uso delle luci di posizione dai proiettori and all that. You see all these lights that we're talking about, whether fuori or all of them are to be used, these three lights they are to be used in centri habitat. Now, in fuori centri habitat, i ciclomotori compresi i quadricicli leggeri. You know, um, the last time during our subsequent lesson, we've talked about quadricycle legendary. We've talked about ciclomotori. Now, here you say, a ciclomotori compressi e quadricycle legendary. That means both ciclomotori and quadricycle legendary that are involved. E in motor vehicle, devono obbligatoriamente fare uso delle luci di posizione. E dei proiettori anabalianti durante la marcia anche nei centri abitati. You see, even ciclomotori, motoveicoli, and um, quadricycle they have to use their own too. Both anabalianti, luce di posizione, and um, okay, maybe those ones they don't have luce di tag and the rest, but your luce di anabalianti and your luce di posizione. You must use it whether you have motorcycle, ciclomotori, or even auto vehicle. You know, you must use those ones, it's very, very important. And can I change habitat? You know, number four, sia di giorno che di notte. Okay, sia di giorno che di notte. You must use this light whether day or night, even if you have. 
chicle motori or you have um, quadricycle injury or motor vehicle all of them must use these lights and it must be whether day or night whether day or night okay now the journal e con buona visibilità i proiettori anabalianti possono essere sostituiti se il veicolo ne è dotato dalla luce di marcia di urna now what does that mean during the day or night during the daytime this anabalient you can decide to put it off and put on another light that is called luce di urna luce di urna what does that mean? Luce di urna is the kind of light that you can use during the day. Okay? It's the kind of light you can use during the day. That's what they call luce. But not every vehicle has it. It's not every vehicle that has it. There are some vehicles that don't have it. If it is, if your vehicle has it, you can use it. But if your vehicle does not have it, you can, you know, continue using your luce di anabaliante. Okay? If your vehicle does not have it, you can continue using your luce. But if your vehicle has it, then you can switch your uh, anabalianti off and then switch on the luci di diurna. Okay. Now, just like we have read about the uso delle luce in this book, we have to also read it in the other book, which is very clear. They say luce, quando si devono accendere da, mezzo, da mezz'ora dopo il tramonto fino a mezz'ora prima dell'alba which I've just said before from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun that is why you're supposed to use it the note you're also supposed to use it sempre sui ciclomotori e sui motocicli di giorno e di notte sia nei centri abitati che fuori like I mentioned before whether in the città or fuori you can use it then the giorno e di notte su strade urbane, you can use it. Sempre in galleria, you can use it. The giorno e di notte in autostrada, you see. Both autostrada and strobane, whether in the night or in the day, you must use your light. It's very, very necessary. You must use your light because as you drive, it depend, depending on, you know, the distance that you are going to, there can be some, as you are driving, there can be some change in weather. Yeah, but when your light is already on, when your number light is already on, there's no need for you to go and look for it and start on it again. That's why it is very it's always advised that you must put it on before you even start driving. Most especially if you are driving on autostrada and you want to travel from one country to another, you know, so that you will not forget that it is not on. You will not forget you thinking that it's on while it is not on. So that's why we are advised to always switch it on, most especially if we are in Tajesiale or Strada Estrebana, or we are in Autostrada, those ones you have to make sure that it is, you know, it is complied with so that uh, there would not be issue because as you drive on the road, I've seen, I was, I was driving, there was a day I was driving a far distance, you know, it was sunny, so because I've covered some kilometers, all of a sudden the weather changed and it became rainy. You know, so since my headlamp was on, there was no need for me to go and start looking for to open it. So I just continued driving, whether in sunshine or in rain. I was just driving to where I was driving. You understand? So that is what it is. Now, ricordasi di accendere gli anabaliati quando si trasportano feriti o ammalati gravi. When you want to transport somebody that is not feeling fine, remember to put it on. Your anabaliant, you must put it on. As you try, you want to transport the person to the nearest hospital, you must definitely put it on. Con nebbia, pioggia, intensa e quando nevica, like we read before. Whether it is rainy, it is sunny, or it is snowy, it must be adhered to your luce anabaliant, it must be on. And the next one is accendere anabalianti alla luce posizione posteriore dietro per nebbia se il veicolo c'è là. You know, there's one light they call for nebbia. There's a light that is for nebbia. I explained it last time in my last lecture. It is towards the down part of your bumper, the, your vehicle bumper. That light helps you to see the road clearly when it has when the road has been covered with nebbia. Or when the road has been covered with nebbia, yes, 
when the road has recovered the nebia. Once the road is covered with nebia, you cannot see far. That is the light you used to see the road. And it will guide you to where you are going. Most especially in the night. It will guide you to where you are going. Most especially at night. Okay, so these are the explanations we've had so far. Now, let's continue. Dove prescrito or over prescrito, they are the same thing. Whether it's dove or over, they are the same thing. Over prescrito, le luce devono essere tenute accese anche a veicolo fermo, sia in fermata che in sosta. Tale obbligo non sussiste se il veicolo è reso pienamente visibile dalla rivelazione pubblica e se viene collocato fuori dalla carreggiata, ad esempio in un parcheggio. Tale obbligo sussiste anche se il veicolo si trova sulla corsia di emergenza di un'autostrada o di una strada estrobana principale. Ok, ma what does it say? Where it has been prescribed, where it has been prescribed? The luce devono essere tenute accese. All lights must be on, even if you've parked your vehicle. Where it is prescribed, though. Where it is prescribed. If it is not prescribed, once you park your vehicle, you switch everything off. You can put your luce de position on. But where it is prescribed that your light must be on, you must leave your lights on. Even if you park your vehicle there, it's like that. Okay. Durante la marcia e in sostituzione degli anabaglianti si devono tenere accesi i proiettori a luce abbagliante. Now they want to tell us when we can use that abbagliante. We want to talk about when we can use it. Okay. Number one, fuori dai centri abitati, quando illuminazione pubblica manchi o sia insufficiente. Illumination public means all the street lights. Where there are no street lights at all. Okay? Where there are no street lights, you can put your abalant on in four day centri habitat. And when there's no vehicle, oncoming vehicle on the road, when there's no oncoming vehicle on the road, you can put it on. But when there's an oncoming vehicle on the road, you quickly switch it off, put the other one on. You understand? That's how it is because of the issue that that one causes at all times whenever it is put on. Okay, now they're telling us how we can use it. For the central because when the illumination public and manky or sia insufficient, when there is no enough, you know, street lights, you know, the street light helps to beautify street by bringing lights to the street. But you know that there are some roads that don't have that street light. So that is where you can use at night. If you are driving in such roads at night, that is it. You understand? Per, per, per altro, per altro, durante le breve interruzioni della macchina, per esigenza della cioccolazione, se va fuori il coronamento, etc. Devono essere usati i proiettori anabaglianti. Ok? When there is circulation on the road, when there is a um, you know, semaphore, in colorability, all those things, colorability means hold up, when there is hold up on the road. Ok? When there is colorability, when there is semaphore, when there is a disaster, the la circulation, that's when the road is busy. Instead of using that your abaliate, you switch it off because now the road is busy. Now there's semaphore, now there's circulation, now there's hold up. You put it off, you put the anabaliate on because that is the one that everybody can use freely without having any issue of any sort. Now, l'uso del proiettori a luce abaliate è vietato. We've talked about when it can be used. Now I want to talk about when it is not allowed to be used. È vietato di norma nei centri abitati. 
Check three habitats in the city center. It is not allowed to be used in the city center at all. E comunque al fuori dei casi previsti, fuori dei centri abitati, i conducenti devono spegnere i proiettori di profondità. Proiettori di profondità is that um, a balance that we are talking about, it's a theory that you can call it proiettori di profondità, you can also call it and a balance, you know, that they are the same thing, they are talking about the same thing. Okay, for the centre habitat, the conducente devono spendere il proiettore di profondità procedendo con quelli anabalianti. You have to put it off to put the other one on. That is the only way you can, you know, drive without having to become an issue or a challenge to other road users. Now, the next one is Quando stanno per incrociare altri veicoli, you know, so you are driving, you know, if it is on a two-way road like this, if you are driving on a two-way road, you are driving like this, the major people are coming like this, it's a two-way road, so vehicles are come going like this, vehicles are coming like this, so as you are driving, you know that you are, other vehicles are coming, you are not supposed to put on your, your abalances at that point, why, because it will disturb the drivers, like I've been saying, so when you are driving on the road, that other vehicles are also using, you know, on the other direction. You are not supposed to put it on. You put it off and use the other one, which is the anabalianti. Okay. Or, via comunque pericolo di abbagliare altri utenti della strada, per donne, conducenti, circolanti su altre strade, etc. When you put on this, the thing, the thing about this abalianti is that it is too powerful. It does not only affect only the driver that is coming on the opposite side. It affects other road users, even those that are walking on their foot, those that are walking on the road, those that are, um, you know, on the other, because you know there are some roads that have two lanes, or two roads, two, um, one strata but two carriageata, two carriageway. You are in a carriageway that has two lanes. The other one, the other carriage where that has two legs. So as you are driving like that, and with you are driving with that um, um, abaliati, it can also affect the people that are on the other um, carriage. You understand? It can also affect them. So that is why it is not advised at all to use that light. That light is uh, very, very strong. That light is very, very strong. La commutazione delle luci va effettuata a una distanza sufficiente affinché i veicoli incrociati possano continuare la loro marcia senza pericolo. Ok, la commutazione delle luci va effettuata a una distanza sufficiente affinché i veicoli incrociati possono continuare la loro marcia senza pericolo. Ok, when, the, when this light that is called um, a ballet is put on, it must be put on in a distance that is sufficient. It must not be in a, in a distance that is not sufficient. For instance, if you are traveling from Parma to Lagrimone, there is a place you get to. Mm -hmm. You will see that that place is a lonely road. A lonely road is in the sense that there are no houses there. It's only forests. And it is quite a distance. The distance is sufficient enough, you know, before you get, you know, to where people are living, to where houses are. In that place at night, if the road is lonely, you can put your abalianti there. That's what is being said here. You can put your abalanti on that line, on that line. If you put it on, you will see, I've tried it before, you will see how it will illuminate the whole place, even the forest, it will illuminate the forest. To tell you how powerful that kind of light is, it will illuminate both the forest, not just the road alone, both the forest. It will illuminate everywhere. Whatever is inside the forest, you can see it with the kind of light that is there. That's why it's not allowed to use it when, you know, vehicles are on the road or in normal chain habitat. You understand? That's why they say it is not allowed to be used. 
you understand. So let's continue. Quando seguono un veicolo a breve distanza, salve che l'uso dei proiettori di profondità venga brevemente in modo intermittente per segnalare al veicolo che procede l'intenzione di sorpassare. Ok? Quando seguono un veicolo a breve distanza, when you are following a vehicle, you know, you are behind the vehicle at very close range. You understand? You are not supposed to remember we are talking about when you are not supposed to use luce di profondità, which is that valiente light. When you are following a vehicle, bombato, you are close to a vehicle, a vehicle in front of you is closer to you. You are not supposed to use it going to disturb him and disturb all that motor that are coming. The only time you are supposed to use it is if you want to indicate to the Drive of that vehicle that is in front of you that look at what you want to do and what is it that you want to do you want to overtake him you understand if you want to overtake him instead of using your horn just like i explained earlier on instead of using your horn you can use that light that abaliante to inform him that you want to overtake him you understand once you flash that light to him he will understand that yes you want to overtake him he will not give you proper enough chance for you to overtake him efficiently and effectively without having to cause any issue on the road okay so that is what it is now a consentito uso intermittente del produttore di profondità sia di giorno che di notte per dare avvertimenti utili al fine di evitare incidenti o per segnalare al veicolo che precede l'intenzione di surpassare all right when the only time you can use this thing is when the road is very very free okay sia di giorno che di notte whether day or night and to you know you are using it to inform or to avoid unnecessary accident why let me explain there are people that when they are driving on the road, they are always there are some of them are some drivers are distracted as they are driving on the road. Distracted in the sense that some will be pressing phone, some will be making call. And by so doing, you discover that they are distracted. As you are driving behind them, you will see their distraction. I don't know if you've noticed, maybe somebody is carrying you in their car, and as you are driving, you discover that the driver in front is not concentrated, is you know, his mind is not there, he's he'll be doing something else. That is affecting his driving you know the way to call him to order is to use that light to flash that light so that is when you can use that light just to flash it to call him to order that look you are you are going off track with the way you are driving you are going off track it's by calling him to order you have avoided any unnecessary accident because with the way they are going any little thing can cause accident you understand? Any little thing can cause an issue on the road. That's why it is always said that when you are driving, make sure that you are driving, you know, at a speed that you can control. Number one, you must drive at a speed that you can control. After which, an issue can arise. You understand? So it's very, very important that as you drive, as you drive, as you drive on the road. For you to, if you see or discover somebody that is in front of you, a driver that is in front of you, you know, losing concentration, you use that light. By the time you flash it to him two times, he will know that you are calling him to order. By so doing, he will comport himself. And as soon as he comports himself, you see that you have saved him from accident, unnecessary accident. But there are people that when they are, they are, when they are driving, they are pressing phone. I've seen somebody like that. When he's driving, that time he's driving, that's the time he wants to be pressing phone. You know, I wonder how he's able to do those two things together. Why don't you concentrate when you get to where you are going? You can pack your vehicle and then come down and then sleep on the phone if you want to. You understand? So, that is it. Okay. The journal, in case of the nebbia, fumo, foscia, ne nevicata, in alto, pioggia intensa, il proiettore di una valenza e quella di profondità, 
pour son incarnation substituée dans le purgatoire féminin de la terminologie. Non, there's a light they call feminine there. And that's the kind of light you can use when it is when it is raining, when it is snowing, when there is nebia and all that, when the weather condition is not favorable. You understand? That is when you can substitute both abalianti and abalianti for uh, fendinebia or luce di nebia. You understand? That luce di nebia helps you to see clearly during those weather conditions that are not favorable. Alright? So that is how it is. That is how it is. Now let's continue. Indicatori luminosi di direzione. Indicatori luminosi di direzione. go to this book so that we can explain what we have explained so far to our students. Now, you know, we've talked about this Uso Imitente, Intermitente Deli Abalianti, how it can be used, Commutazione, which is Cambiamento Abalianti to an Abalianti. Si può fare un lampeggio con gli Abalianti, anche di giorno e in città, per evitare incidenti, avvisare il veicolo davanti che lo vuoi sopassare, come ho spiegato prima, se sono accessi gli abbaglianti si devono mettere gli abbaglianti quando si incrocia un veicolo, 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 si può dire che un altro veicolo è venuto, si può immediatamente switchare il veicolo e switchare il numero 1, si segue un altro veicolo. That is when you are supposed to use your anabalance. You are following another vehicle, use your anabalance subito. Si rischia di abbaliare veicolo o pedode. If you don't want to risk, if you don't want to risk shining the light on the eyes of those pedone or other vehicle that are on the road, you can stop using this abbaliance and switch it to this anabalance when you discover that it's disturbing the Even before you discover, because there's no one that does not know that that abalianti is very, very troublesome. Okay? Indicatory di direzione. Okay, let's leave that one. Let's go to our book first before we talk about that one. Okay, indicatory luminosi di direzione. That's what we're going to talk about now. A luci intermittente. Servono a segnalare gli altri utenti della strada sia di giorno che di notte, che il conducente intende cambiare direzione. Il loro uso è quindi obbligatorio per segnalare l'intenzione di effettuare un cambio di corsia. No, this light that we're talking about has to do with luce di direzione. Luce di direzione is your trafigator. Your trafigator is that light that helps you, like I explained in our last lecture, that helps you to Tell other road users that you intend to go left or you intend to go right. There are some lights that are like that, you know. It tells you that you have to go left and you have to go left. And it is yellow in color. You understand? It's yellow in color. Very, very important we know it. Servono a segnalare gli altri utenti della strada. Segnalare gli altri utenti della strada road users, sia di giorno che di notte, un day, ora day or night. You use it day or night. Che il conducente intende cambiare direzione. That the driver wants to cambiare direzione. To cambiare direzione is to change direction. You are driving straight and you intend to go left. You just put it towards the left. And you start to go right. You place it towards the right. As you get to where you're going, you enter. By placing it, by putting it on, you have already told everybody on the road that, comes, that is concerned that look at what you intend to do. You have, tell, you have told them your mind. If you are going left, You put it towards the left. You have told them your mind that ah, when you get to that junction, you are going up. So what they do is they every other user will comport themselves in the way that, for instance, the one that is following you behind will have to slow down. Why? Because you have already told him what you want to do. You have already told that driver behind you what you want to do. What the person will first of all do is to slow down. You know, he will not be following you with speed again slow because he knows that very soon you will slow down in order for you to take the direction that you have indicated. You understand? So that is it. 
C'est obligatoire parce qu'il y a l'intention de effectuer un cambio de cossier. Cambio de cossier, c'est quand vous changez le cossier. Quand vous changez le cossier, le cossier means lane. So when you change your lane, when you change your lane, that means you have changed the cossier. But for you to change your lane, you need to make use of that um, trafficator. We call it trafficator in English, but it is called uh, Luce di Ressione in Italian. Okay, so whenever you see mutual decision, just know that they're talking about your trafficator. It's used to help you to you know, talk about it. I mean, to go either left or right. Or you want to change course here. You want to change course here. You want to change from this first lane, this speed lane. You want to change from speed lane to um, um, the middle lane. You must use your trafficator. Want to change from the middle lane to the other lane because in very close, in a, within a short period of time you leave the autostrada or you will come down from the tangentially. You need your trafficator to let other road users come in behind. That thing is very important. It's very well, most especially in autostrada. I've driven several in autostrada. I know what I'm talking about. You know, you just put it and you follow. Once you put it, everybody behind you will take note and they will give you a chance to do what you want to do. You understand? And you too, as you're doing it, you must not do it. Um, without calculation you must do it calculating well by looking at these things as you as you you know pass your theory as you go into this thing i want to tell you now before you put it you must look very well that is it good is it is, is the time right for you to put it on for instance now you are in the left lane you want to go to the right lane or you are in the left lane you are in the right lane you want to go to the left lane before you put it on there is this mirror in front of your vehicle here and there's one out to outside like this. One is here, one is here, one is inside your vehicle up there. You make use of those mirrors, you engage those mirrors. If you are looking, if you want to put go to the right, you look as you put it, you look to you look at that mirror to know whether the vehicles are the right, the vehicles coming to you, coming behind you from the right, if they are far enough. If it's not clear, I can explain. You want to know that they are far enough, far enough in the sense that so that when you intend to do what you have already, what you have in mind, you know, you have a long, you know, a long time to do it. There's nobody that is in a haste. But when you look at that mirror, you put it, when you look at that mirror, you see that there's a vehicle behind you and it's very close. You wait. You wait in that lane that you are until you discover that that vehicle has passed and you look again, there's no other vehicle. Then you can go ahead and then move from left or see at the right or move from you know, um, right to left, or from Corsia to Corsia, or even from street to street, whether it is on the right or in the left. You know, so these things are very vital. These things are very vital. The next one is effectuare una manovra di svolta. I just said it now. When you want to manoeuvre, manoeuvre di svolta is, you know, turning. You want to manoeuvre, you want to do your turning manoeuvre, either to the left or the right. Okay. Adestra or sinestra, that is um, two, diagram two. Look at diagram two here, you see that this boss wants to go left. So because it wants to go left, that's taking the left lane. Okay. It wants to go left, so that's taking the left lane. Immettesi nella carreggiata principale. Provenendo da una corsia di accelerazione. Corsia di accelerazione. I told you what it is some time ago. And I believe you have not forgotten. In mettersi nella carreggiata principale. Provenendo da una corsia di accelerazione. Now, you know that if you want to enter autostrada, there is a corsia, or even that they say there is a corsia you use. Okay, that corsia is called corsia di acceleration. I told you that corsia di acceleration is the lane that leads you into the road, into the main road. For instance, you want to enter autostrada, the lane that leads you into the autostrada is what is called uh, corsia di acceleration. Now, in that same vein, the lane that leads you out of the tangentially or out of the autostrada is called Corsia di Decelerazione. Corsia di Decelerazione. But in this case, we are talking about Corsia di Accelerazione. So when you tend to, you know, enter into the carreggiata using the 
conseil d'accélération, l'autre direction, il faut se mettre dans le monde, il faut se mettre dans le monde. So that the left traffic get on will be blinking, letting all the road users know that look at what you want to do. You want to enter the autostrada very well. You want to enter the tangential very well. Is it clear? So that is important. These things are very, very vital. Spostasi de la cosia de degeneration per uscire. These are the times you must use your traffic get on. You want to go nice. You have gotten to where you are about to reach your city, the city that you are going. So you want to come down from the tangential, or you want to come down from the autostrada, use your trafficator. And as you use your trafficator, you are going towards the discussia, the deceleration that will eventually lead you out of the tra uh, autostrada or out of the tangential. Okay? The next one is... Ralentare per effettuare una fermata. Okay, when you want to effectuate a fermata, effectuate a fermata means to stop. Maybe you want to drop somebody, or you want to park your vehicle. You know, you must put that traffic gate on because you already know that you don't just park in the middle of the road, or you don't just park uh, towards the, you know, at the left end of the road. But that one, that course here is for speed. That lane, not so that right lane, that left lane, not so is for speed. Low speed, high speed, serious speed. So you don't park on top of that place. But once you want to park, you come towards the right. And as you are going towards the right, you need to make use of your trafficator, put it up to let them know that you are going towards the right. Even if it does not mean that you are going to park, you are going towards the right. All right? Now, or per packaggiare sul margine della strada, o fuori della carreggiata, sia verso destra che verso sinistra. Okay, effettuare una manovra di sorpasso, yes, effettuare una manovra di sorpasso, where you want to overtake, where you want to overtake. If I told you that sometimes, if you want to overtake, you can, most of the time actually, you can, instead of using um, your horn, you can use the, um, instead of using your horn, you can use the um, trafficator to indicate that look at what you intend to do. Okay, when you use the trafficator to indicate it, it will be easy. It will be easy for you to overtake. Most especially, you have already informed the people that are behind you. Because if you only make use of your um, abalant by tapping it, you know, by blinking it, if you have only passed information to the vehicle that is in front of you. You understand? The vehicle that is your back does not know what you intend to do. You understand? So, the only best way for everybody to know what you intend to do on you know, the road, maybe. You want to, you know, um, you, you intend to, you know, uh, let me see. Okay. You intend to surpassare. You intend to surpassare. Okay. The vehicle in front of you, you have, if you blink that light, you have already informed him that look at what you intend to do. But what of the vehicle behind you? He does not know what you intend to do. But with your trafficator, once you put it on, as you are driving on that line, as you put your trafficator on towards the left, automatically both the one in front of you and the one behind you, all of them know that this is what you want to do, you want to overtake. So what they do is they give you the chance for you to successfully do it without having to become an issue or a challenge on the road. Now the last one is, um, okay, let me read for now. Utilizando indicatore sinistro, All'inizio della manovra è quello destro nel rientro in corsia di Maccia. Terminata la manovra occorre spegnere. Now, do you know that I have taught you some time ago that there's a way to overtake? We just explained it here. So let me go further to explain. Once you want to overtake, the first thing you need to do is to watch your vehicle and watch the vehicle in front of you, behind you. Now, how do you see the vehicle that is behind you without having to look back? Very simple. Look at those mirrors that is in front of your vehicle. That mirror is in front of your vehicle there, and these two that are by the side, outside. If you look at them, that is the only way you can see the vehicle that is behind you without having to turn back. You understand? So when you look at them, when you look at that mirror, now you want to overtake. When you look at that mirror, you see that the vehicle behind you has, does not intend to overtake. The next thing you are supposed to do again is to look ahead to know whether the space you need for this over that 
don't want to overtake is sufficient enough. You understand? If it is sufficient enough, fine. Then if it's not sufficient enough, you relax and wait until the oncoming vehicle passes. If the oncoming vehicle have passed, you look again to see if there's another sufficient vehicle, sufficient space for you to overtake before the next vehicle that is coming. If there's sufficient space, what you do is you now put your traffic gate on. Overtake the vehicle. Come out of that lane, enter the other lane, overtake the vehicle. Then after overtaking the vehicle, you see you also need to put your traffic gate to the right because you overtake on the left. So now you have overtake on the left, you put your vehicle, your traffic gate on the left, done the overtaking. Now for you to enter into the lane again, you must do the another traffic gate by putting it towards the right. Or, yes, by putting it towards the right direction so that other road users can know that no man, you have overtake, you want to enter back inside that lane. You want to go back into that lane. So when you put it, the vehicle behind you now know that they have to give you chance so that you can enter successfully. You understand? So that is the explanation of this um, overtaking here. Now, the next one is Patire dal Margine della Carreggiata per immettersi nel flusso della circolazione. Patire dal Margine della Carreggiata per immettersi nel flusso della circolazione. Now you have parked your vehicle somewhere, maybe to drop person or to make call. You want to enter again into the lane. You put your traffic gate on and you enter successfully without having to issue um, disturb anyone or become a challenge to anyone. In Vettile, it's also the match of Fetuara Manova de Retro Machia. Now, to in Vettile, it's also the match. In Vettile, it's also like making you turn. That's what they mean by in Vettile, it's also the match. If you make you turn, you are turning in Vettile, the match. You understand, you are going straight like this, and all of a sudden you turn. I started going backward. That is inverted the match, you know. So for you to do it successfully, you must involve your indicator in the direction, which is that your traffic gate. You know, for you to do it successfully without having any issue of any sort, you must undergo the school of that traffic gate. You must undergo the school of traffic gate by putting it on. As you put it on, you see that other road users will now know that you, even if they don't give you the chance, they already know that you want to enter. You understand? So maybe once Good Samaritan will say, okay, enter, let them give you a chance. Or once the road is free, you can enter. So that is it. Now the next, um, okay. A little bit in our book here. Okay, we saw the indicator duration. Look at it now. If you look at this diagram here, you see that a vehicle, the other vehicle behind this one, has already indicated to move and it is already moving. The other one wants to go left and the other one wants to go right. You see that they have already completed, you know, by using their traffic gate. Okay, the next one is. Um, the next one is. Um, Sesifaretomatia, Sesifaretomatia, if you want to reverse, if you want to reverse, it's very, very important in case you are using, you want to reverse to the left. Yes, you are going back, but you are going back towards the left. You put your traffic gate towards the left. You don't have to go back successfully towards the left. You are going back successfully towards the right. You put your traffic gate towards the right so that it will inform road users that you are going back and if you want to get to this to go back towards the right place. Maybe there's a package you saw that is on the left, but there's a package you saw that is on the right. You want to engage it as you put your reverse gear, you put your traffic gate there so that they will know that that is the package that you want to engage. You understand? So that is how it is now. Um, the next one is um, Se si entra nella strada. Like I explained before, if you want to enter Strada, this is where you use it. Se si esce dalla carreggiata per una fermata o una sosta, you want to leave the carreggiata now. Okay, because you want to stop, you want to fermata, you want to sosta, both of them. You want to leave, so you use your traffic gate to indicate it. Okay, se si entra o si esce da un package. You want to come out from a package, you want to enter a package from a package. You want to if you have something to do with the traffic gate, you do it. Very, very important. As you are coming out of the traffic of the package, you put it on. 
to let them know that uh, you want to enter the road again. The next one is Pentrada Oshira Dalotostrada. Pentrada Oshira Dalotostrada. Like I said before, for you to enter Autostrada, you must you must use a lane called Cosia de Acceleracion. And as you are about to enter, you put your traffic gate to enter successfully. As you are leaving Autostrada, you use the lane called Cosia de Deceleracion. And as you are leaving it, you are putting your traffic gate towards the so that it will be indicated that truly you are leaving. Because you leave on the right and you enter on the left in Autostrada. You leave, as you are leaving Autostrada, you leave on the right, but you enter on the left. Okay, very, very necessary that we know these two things. Now, le segnalazioni, le segnalazioni vanno fatte tempestivamente per dare la possibilità agli altri utenti della strada di evitare incidenti devono continuare per tutta la durata della manovra e cesare allora che essa è stata completa ok this kind of sign this trafficator is a kind of trafficator that you must engage Engage it in the sense that from the beginning of when you from the beginning of what you want you intend to do to the end of it. As you start it, you will end it. You understand? As you start it, you put it on. Then as you continue, as you continue, as you continue, finish as soon as you're about to finish what you what you had in mind to do, you put it off and you continue your movement. For instance, you put your traffic gate on to the left. You want to go left as you get there, you enter left as soon as you enter left. But even sometimes your steering can help you to off it, you understand? Because as soon as you return your steering, you off. But if your steering does not help you to off it, it is until you have completed your maneuver that is when you can now off it. And if you have completed your movement to enter left, then you are off it. Or you have completed your movement to enter right, then you can off it. You understand? Altre dispositivi di illuminazione, luce di targa, luce di arresto, protettore di retromarcia. Um, I've explained this once before, I just want to run them down um, because um, you don't need to explain much of it anymore. Luce della targa, we already know what it is. The luce that is at your targa, you know, that makes your targa visible. Luce di arresto, brake light, once you put it on, once you match it. Your brake light at the back of your vehicle is not in front, it's at the back. Once you match your brake, there's a light that shows at the back. That one is what they call Luce de Arresto. The other one is Protector de Retromacha. Retromacha, once you put your, your vehicle in reverse, there's a light that is on. You understand? So you turn to people that look your, you know, um, your, your, you are going back, to let people know that you are driving backwards. Fendinebia anterior, Fendinebia anterior is that your Luce Penebia. That Luce Penebia, that Luce Penebia is, is what they call Fendinebia anterior, but the one they call anterior is the one that is in front, because anterior means front or frontal. Okay, anterior means front or frontal. So the one that is in your front is what is called anterior, Fendinebia anterior. The one that behind is called Fendinebia posterior. The, two different, the difference between the two is that the one in front is white in color. The one behind is red. You understand? The one behind is red. The one in front is white. Okay, but both of them are called Luci di Fendinebia or Proiettori Fendinebia. You understand? So the difference between them is that one, the, ones, the two that are in front is um, white, but the two behind is red. In some vehicles, it can be one that is behind. Okay? It's a small vehicle, that way. Now, then, Luce Posterior Elementa, which the name, the name, which I've just explained, when you can be using it, Luce de Macha de Una. In some vehicles, there's what they call Luce de Macha de Una. That Luce de Macha de Una is daylight. It's the light you use during the day. If you don't want to use your Anna Baliati, it's another light you can use. It's the daylight. Okay. Luce de Sosta. So the color of Bianco Davanti here, the rose. Look to the source as spark light. Okay.
Okay, okay. Put the sauce that is packed light. Once you put it, once you pack your vehicle, you put it there. Okay. Then the other, you put it on the other one is salvation luminosa, the pericolo or the magenza. A constituita da lampeggio simultaneo di tutti gli indicatori luminosi di direzione 1, which is this, this um, diagram 1 here. You can see that the four traffic lights, the four uh, traffic gators, they are on. When, why it is on like that is whenever there is an issue on the road, maybe you are driving on the road, your vehicle has an issue, you put it on, it means emergency. Okay? It means the emergency. When you put your four traffic on at the same time, and four of them are blinking like this at the same time, what does it mean? It means emergency, that there is an emergency with your vehicle. Okay? Or if there is an accident, you put it on too, to indicate that there is an emergency. Accident is also an emergency. Okay, so that is how it is. A conductance of the vehicle and motor. A conductance of the vehicle and motor. La devono azionare. Devono azionare. Excuse me. Nei casi di ingombro della strada, diagram two. Ingombro della strada, which is a light accident issue on the road durante il tempo necessario a collocare o riprendere il segnale mobile di pericolo diagram 3 look at it diagram 3 this in this diagram 3 now the reason here is that this vehicle had an issue it's not necessarily an accident it is if the vehicle develop issue you know vehicle as you are driving it you are enjoying it before you know one day they don't put hope in vehicle. One day it can disappoint you. Start it, it will not start. Maybe sometimes in the middle of the road, as you are driving, you are enjoying it. It's giving you joy. When the problem comes, it can disappoint you at any time. You understand? So in this case of this diagram now, that this woman is, is putting that triangle, it's not a case of accident. It's a case of malfunctioning of the vehicle. Maybe she has tried to own it, not on again. Maybe she drive a rich day. You understand? So then I reached there. Maybe because of traffic, I've seen, I've told you before, I saw I was in the traffic light, I was driving on the road, and this traffic light stopped us on that road. So when we were about to move, the woman that was in front of me, when the light, the traffic light became green, for her to move, she was not moving. I was like, ah, this woman knows, never sees this traffic, it don't, it don't come off for red, it don't become green. She did not move, then I used my hand to, you know, maybe she's pressing for. I used my hand to wake her up. She did not move. Then she now switched on these four traffic gators. Then I said, ah, this motor don't disappoint this woman. What I did was to look very well. I entered the other lane and I continued my journey. So, vehicle can disappoint anybody at any time. As you are driving it, you are enjoying it, but it can disappoint at any time. So, when it disappoints, or when you know a vehicle that has disappointed somebody, it's when they put on that four trafficator at the same time. It is there's a button in your vehicle. Maybe in our next lecture we'll talk about that button in this spear. I know we've talked about spear before, you know, but we can talk about it in our next lecture. We can talk about it in our next lecture. Very, very necessary. We'll talk about it in our next lecture. If God permits. So that you will know that there's a particular button. Or should I even see this? If I even look for the button here, excuse me. Let me look, let me see if I can find it. Anyway, let's continue. There's a button, one button that you can press inside your vehicle. Once you press that button, the four traffic lights will be, will, be, will, be, will be blinking at the same time. Four of them will be blinking at the same time, like we have in our diagram one here. Four of them will be just be blinking at the same time. Okay. Durante il tempo necessario a collocare e riprendere il segnale mobile di pericolo. This triangle here is what they call triangle. Um, Segnale mobile di pericolo, which is called triangolo. 
you understand they put it you put it on the road there now for so that other road users that are coming behind them will know that this vehicle has an issue they will know because of this triangle number one they will also know because of the traffic gate or the traffic gate that is on side at the same time okay then let's get to the next one which is quando pavaria um Quando per fare il veicolo è costretto a procedere a velocità particolarmente moderata. Now, because of this vehicle that has half issue now, other vehicles that are coming from behind have to put on their own to, to show the reason why the to show the reason why there is a, why the, the, the movement on that road is slow. You understand? For instance, let's say this woman's vehicle is not moving, it's moving, but it's no longer moving fast because of the tires have been punctuated. You understand? You know, when the tire is punctuated, you discover that the air will leak. Then the tire will now be flat. You see that nobody moves speed with a flat tire. So the woman can be driving slowly, you know, with the travigators on. Other vehicles that are coming behind it will also put their own travigators on. So let people that are behind know that, look, there's an issue with a vehicle in this our lane. That is why we are slow. So what the woman is trying to do, as she's driving, she's looking for a good place that she can, you know, park her car so that the movement of the, on that road can continue as it was before. You understand? So the movement on the road can continue as it was before. Very, very important. Very, very important. Now, says verificano improvvisi rallentamenti o incolonamenti. Okay, like what I've explained before. Now, in tutti i casi in cui la fermata di emergenza constituisce pericolo, anche momentaneo, momentaneo per gli altri utenti. The strada. In tutti i casi, we la fermata di emergenza constituisce pericolo anche momentaneo per gli altri utenti della strada. In the moment whereby fermata di emergenza, the so they call fermata di emergenza. Fermata is just emergency stop. Emergency stop. When there's an emergency stop, because there's an accident sometimes, you know, emergency stops constitute danger to other road users even at the moment emergency stop that's why they always tell us as we are driving as we are driving the vehicle that is in front of you give that vehicle enough gap that is proportionate to your speed level enough gap that is proportionate to your speed level that is why that is where this word called um distance the sicurezza comes into play okay that's where it comes into play because when there's enough distance the sicurezza even if there's an emergency for matter, it cannot affect you. Why? Because you are seeing you are in the gap between you and your and the vehicle that's in front of you is wide enough. So emergency and for matter the emergency cannot really affect anyone that has sufficient or that has created sufficient the standard security between the between their vehicle and the vehicle that is in front of it. Now let's go to this one called Catadriotri. Catadriotri. In Catadriotri, I believe you've come across this word before. So no dispositivi che riflettono, riflettono la luce e integrano la funzione delle luci. Catadriotri a reflectors in general because they reflect light okay um what i mean by reflect reflect means if you shine light to something you will see it clearly you will see it will reflect on that light you understand look at the reflectors here this catadot in this diagram diagram b you will see that the reflector is there triangular form you will see it, they put it there it is used to reflect light. When you bounce light on it, it will reflect. You, it will shine. That is what it means. Okay. And of course, the computer, particularly the north, it is always at the night that it reflects. You see those vests that people used to wear, those green vests, those olive green vests, and the orange vests that people used to wear. I have one here. 
when you are when they are driving bicycle at the night, you will see that you can easily notice them on the road because of that vest. So that vest is reflective. It is another form of katadiotri. Yeah, that vest is very reflective. It is another form of this katadiotri. You know, when they come to particular method in the in the night, they in the carry the presence of the lingombro de la the vehicle. Su cui sono applicati anche se a luce spente. You understand? Inoltre, se illuminati, rendono più visibili i veicoli e i rimocchi in sosta sulla strada. Anything that, is, that has catadriotto on it, it will be easily reflected, most especially at night. You know this with a carry container. You know, there's a time that they can pack their container somewhere. I've explained this thing before. They pack their container somewhere and they leave it there. They remove the trailer head. They just leave the container there. Go to the back of that container. You will see these reflectors or catadiotri. It is always there. So that when you bounce your light as you are driving on the road, you shine your light, it will quickly reflect. And once it reflects, it gives you the full picture of the vehicle that is parked there. Most times, big, big vehicles like this. You understand? In other side, you not know, visible, pure visible vehicle, a remote in Sosta, so that strada. Or un vehicle guasto. Yes, vehicle guasto can have it. Vehicle guasto can have it. There are cases in which no function, no. Le sue luci di posizione. Posterior, the catadori possono essere bianchi, it can be white. If it is in front, it can be white. Evidenziano la parte davanti dei rimocchi, dei semi rimocchi e dei carelli appendici. Number two, it can be rosy, red, if it is behind, like this one in this diagram now. Sono presenti, sono prescritti per tutti gli autoveicoli, motoveicoli e rimocchi. O e hanno forma triangolare B, which is in this diagram here. Se installati nella parte posteriore dei rimorchi e dei carelli appendici. All these carelli appendici, all these rimorchi, they have it. All of them have it. There is no rimorchi that you see that does not have catadiotri on it. It must be there. Why? Because it helps to render those vehicles visible, mostly at night. Giallo ambra, there's another one they have, they have the yellow type. Se laterale per veicoli di lunghezza superiore a 6 meter, 6 metri. They have veicoli that, that are longer than 6 meters, they have the yellow type. Okay, the yellow type is always in a regular, rectangular font, telling you that the vehicle is a long vehicle. E ambesa solo l'installazione. The dispositive di illuminazione e segnalazione visiva previsti dalle norme e i cui componenti siano omologati. You know, we keep talking about this omologati because these things are necessary. The types that are being used are the types that are approved. For instance, the type that is approved for a small vehicle is not the type that is approved for a big vehicle. Therefore, you cannot exchange the two. You cannot take the one that is used for small vehicle and not put it in the big vehicle or vice versa. It will contradict and it will become an issue. Okay. Now, talking about Catadio in this new book, Reflect on la Luce. You know, one thing I like about this new book is that explanation is very, very short and simple for everybody to understand. Reflect on la Luce. Number one. Servono per far vedere meglio i veicoli e i rimorchi. It serves to see clearly the vehicle or the remorchi. It's always it's also in a small vehicle too. Then sono rossi dietro di forma triangolare nei rimorchi e carelli appendici e bianchi davanti, like I explained before. The ones that are in front are white, the ones that are behind are red. Okay. Now there's Luci di Arresto, sono rose, like I explained before, rose, the brake light, rose, si accendono quando si fiora, when you match your brake, the light will come on, that's how it comes on, that's how it is on. Luci di Ricciromaccia, sono bianche, si accendono quando si va indietro, if you go back, the light will come on, if you're driving back, if you're reversing backward, 
ni mucho de um, retromacha o como señalación luminosa uh, which has to do with uh, pericolo okay that will have to be in our next lecture we'll talk about spear okay so we will come to the end of today's lecture with this few explanations and i want us to see if there are any questions we have or if there are any questions we've had before that we want to ask that is related to this driving theory this is the time for us to do so okay so any question mrs mary Okay, anyway, we've come to the end of today's lecture. And I, be, I want to believe that um, we have learned something today. Yeah. So, um, what about the next topic after this one? Are you still having issues with the topic or you want us to go to another topic in our next lecture? Okay, that means the next topic after this topic is okay for you. Yeah. Okay. And there's no problem. So by next week we're going to move to another topic, or maybe any other topic that is still you are still having issues with. For now. No. Okay. All right. So we've come to the end of today's lecture. I want you. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your time. Last week there was no questions on your part. Um, there was no, maybe you didn't have a chance to treat any quiz. Um, if that's the case, then maybe try and um, I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy, but keep, keep at it. I keep telling you to keep at it. You are doing well already. You know, you are really doing well already. You are doing well already. So just keep at it. Very soon you go and sit for this exam. I mean, I promise you that with the seed, with your level of seriousness, when you sit for this exam, you will pass. You will pass. So just keep at it. The Lord is your strength. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a blessed week ahead. In Jesus' name. Till next time, we'll see. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Ciao, ciao. All right, Miss Mary. Ciao. Hope you are doing well. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. That quiz I sent to you, have you downloaded it in your phone? Yes, please. Okay, so how are you? How are you? Are you treating? Are you doing the? Are you solving the questions in the quiz? for the quiz, right? Oh, ah, okay. I thought you requested for the quiz. Oh. That means I only sent you two items, two books. Hmm? Okay. How many books did I send you? Just two. Download it into any into your phone.
Okay, so how far have you been solving the questions? So have you been have you been have you been working on it? There's no problem. Just keep at it. As we, as, as we are handing our lectures like this, you can go back to your quiz on your free time and lay your hands on what we have learned on the quiz that is related to what we have learned today. Okay. Mm. okay. If there are any questions you don't understand, you can snap them, send them to me. Downloaded it in your phone, right? Yeah, I have downloaded the book that is the letter one. You will search for the topic of the quiz. There are several topics on the quiz. You search on the topics, you look for the topic we treated today. Uh, okay. Mm. You look for the copies you the topic we treated okay. today, and you click it, and the questions will match. So any quiz you lay your hand on and you don't understand the quiz, you can snap it, screenshot it and send it to me on WhatsApp. Okay. So that I will explain to you better. Okay. All right, thank you for your time. Okay, until we meet next week. Thank you. All right, thank you for your time here on this platform. I want to um, I want to thank you so much, my YouTubers, my subscribers that have been following us. Alright, so uh, please don't forget to share this video with your social media community. Like I said before we went into the lecture, share with your social media community so that they can have access to what you are enjoying. Alright, if you go along with there's nobody that does not want to drive and there is nobody that does not want to know how to drive or understand the nitty gritty about driving. So this is your plug. This is your short plug to understanding these things. Alright, so share this um, video to um, your social media communities. And then if you're interested in you know having a private lecture with us, you know, let's see your comments in the comment section so that we can put you through. Alright? And then see to you that you become a success yourself. Okay. So until next time when we meet, um have a lovely day, a lovely evening, enjoy the rest of the day and have a blessed week. Alright? Thank you so much and bye bye.